Welcome back guys to our Android programming tutorial series on Android material designing. This is Annie from SmartHerd. In this video, we will be learning about floating action button in detail. We will Now let us understand floating action button with few examples. On the left side of the screen, we can see an image of the Zender application. Here on the right hand side corner, we can see a circular icon floating above the UI. This is known as the floating action button. In this image, there are two floating action button in the Android application. This is not recommended until and unless it is necessary to be used in the application. Each floating action button serves a special purpose. For the Zender application, we can see the floating action button is for the sending or the receiving action. For the Google map, one is to spot your location and the other is to show the direction. In the third example, we can see this is a screenshot of contacts in my Android device. In the bottom end, we can see the floating action button which is defined for adding contacts to your contact list. This is what floating action button is all about. It is used for a special action. Let us learn about few features of floating action button. As I already said, at the bottom end on the right hand side, we can see there is a circled icon floating above the UI. This is what is floating action button. The floating action button is used for special promoted actions. Let us go through the Google guidelines that are being defined to use the floating action button in our application. We are here again in the official website of Google that defines the specification of various components of Android material designing. Click to the navigation icon and go to components and then select buttons. From the buttons select the floating action button and this is the page where you land. Now let's move into the floating action button guidelines. The first one says floating action buttons are used for a promoted action. They are distinguished by a circled icon floating above the UI and have motion behaviors that include morphing, launching and a transferring anchor point. It says that the floating action button has the motion behavior. The floating action button comes in two sizes. The default size is the normal one. It is used in most of the cases and the second one is the mini size. It is used to create visual continuity with other screen elements. On the left side we can see the floating action button is of the normal size whereas the floating action button on the right hand side image is the mini floating action button. It is used to create the visual continuity in our application. Moving forward, the size for the floating action button is being defined. For the normal floating action button, the interior icon has to be of the dimension 24 by 24 dp. And the floating action button circle has to be 56 by 56 dp. For the mini floating action button, the interior icon is same. It is 24 by 24 dp. The only change is in the outer circle of the button. It changes from 56 to 40 by 40 dp. There is also guideline on where to place the floating action button in our screen. The floating action button should be placed 16 dp minimum from the edge on the mobile and 24 dp minimum on the tablet or desktop. So this is an important thing to keep in mind. Moving further down, we see the qualities for the floating action button. The floating action button should make the positive actions like create, favorite, share, navigate and explore. For the add action, for the edit action, to mark something as favorite and so on. The guideline says it should not be used for minor and destructive actions. It should not be used for non-specific actions or for the alerts or errors. Because it should only be used with a positive action, we cannot use the floating action button if we need to delete an item, if we need to cut it, if we need to download something. The floating action buttons doesn't contain app bar icons or status bar notification.
Same way guys, there are few more properties that are being defined for the floating action button. I would like you to go through it yourself and learn more about floating action button. Let us now go back to the features of the floating action button and learn more about it. The next feature of the floating action button is it is wrapped in coordinator layout. With the Android material design, the snack bar and the floating action button were introduced. So for the floating action button to work with the snack bar, we need to wrap the both components in the coordinator layout, which we will be learning about in further videos. That's all for this video. In the next video, we will be learning about implementing the floating action button in our Android application. Till then, thanks for watching. If you like the video, do share and leave your comment below the video. Subscribe to our channel and help us grow. I also have given the link for the source code of the entire module below in the description. You can go there and refer to it. For further videos, stay tuned, keep smiling and have a good day.